Redefining the Anthropocene Epoch, One Community Weekly Progress Update, number 515. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. This includes highest good approaches to food, energy, housing, education, for-profit and non-profit business creation, society, and true earth stewardship. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the executive director of the One Community 51C3 nonprofit organization. One Community is bringing out people with the consciousness and the desire for the highest good of all life on this planet to build sustainable, regenerative, and self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a pathway to global sustainability. This is our February 5th, 2023 edition of our weekly progress update, and today's topic is an interesting one. It is redefining the Anthropocene Epoch. And uh, I'm excited about this topic because the Anthropocene Epoch is something that's in the headlines right now because science, scientists are trying to decide on where they're going to mark the best place to measure the beginning of the Anthropocene Epoch. Now, if you don't know what the Anthropocene Epoch is, it is the epoch that followed the Holocene Epoch, which lasted about 11,000 years and uh, began with the, the end of the last ice age. And the Anthropocene Epoch is called the Anthropocene Epoch because it is when humanity has started uh, noticeably impacting the planet. It became the number one driving force for global change. And the reason why they're saying that is because there's many things that existed on the planet at the beginning of the Anthropocene Epoch that never existed before us. And examples of that would be plutonium. You know, you can measure plutonium everywhere in the world now because we dropped the atom bomb and uh, that never existed before. Other examples would be aluminum, refined aluminum, did not exist on the planet. Pure aluminum now is commonplace because we make so many things out of it. Plastic is another example. Coal ash is another example. So all of these things are examples of humanity having a dramatic and unfortunately negative impact on the planet. And so the Anthropocene Epoch is, they're, they're hypothesizing that it started somewhere between like 50 to 80 years ago. Um, as the industrial age really kicked in and we started just creating all this stuff and having such a radical, I mean, just radically sped up our impacts on the planet. So redefining the Anthropocene Epoch is something that I think is worth talking about it. Because millions of years from now, you would be able to look back on the planet, assuming it still exists, and you could actually measure like the first time when plastic spread all over the, the the planet. Like you'd be able to say like, oh look, just like you could take core samples and you say, oh, this was this is something different that happened here. It never happened prior to that. Just like we're doing this for ice ages and things like that. You know, same thing with plutonium, same thing with aluminum. And so the question is, is how will the Anthropocene Epoch be defined? You know, it's gonna last how long? Could we make it last only a few hundred years? Is that even a concept, the idea that an epoch could be so short because we radically shifted our thinking and completely changed the way that we are interacting with our shared environment, our one single planet that we all share here? I mean, could it be that there was this huge change and then we decided to clean up the planet? I don't know if that's possible, but how this epoch is, decide, is, is defined is definitely going to be up to us. And so... One community wanted, we wanted to talk about redefining the Anthropocene Epoch because we're all about sustainable infrastructure. We're about open source tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of sustainable living to build a self-replicating model designed to achieve global sustainability within our lifetime. And if we can achieve that, that would redefine the Anthropocene Epoch. Like it would, it would define humanity as a, as a species of stewardship instead of destruction. And I think that that's pretty important because I think that a lot of people right now are feeling that we are on a path to extinction. There's a lot of scientific markers that are showing that we're not doing a very good job. You know, objectively, what we're, the way that we're living right now, the way that we're clear-cutting forests, we're destroying ecosystems, the way that we're treating the planet and the impact that we're having on the planet is objectively not sustainable. And so the good news is it's a great time to get motivated and do something different. 
The good news is it's a great time for redefining the Anthropocene Epoch as when the, the Epoch, when humanity realized that we can have planetary impacts, that we are the number one species capable of creating planetary impacts, and we took action. We decided to create heaven on earth. We decided to create a sustainable world. We decided to create a world that works for everybody by working together, by focusing on cooperation and collaboration instead of competition and saying, we're not going to do it that way anymore. We're going to create a new paradigm, a paradigm focused on cooperation, collaboration, sustainability, holistic practices that look at our one shared planet as the home that we're sharing and as humanity as a brotherhood and a sisterhood capable of taking care of that home and making it better than it's ever been before. Like truly stewarding this planet, rebuilding ecosystems, greening the desert, you know, um, restoring our watersheds, restoring our biodiversity, you know, and this is something that we have the ability to do. And so thousands, tens of thousands of years from now, when they look back on the Anthropocene Epoch and they say, oh, wow, look at all these different biomarkers. What are the other markers that are going to show up at that time? What other, what other indicators of how we decided, how we chose to to um, engage this next chapter in the human story, what other, what other markers are going to be uh, available? You know, what other, what other things are they going to look at? Are they going to look at it as like, oh man, humanity really took a nosedive from this point forward? Or are they going to look at it as like, wow, you know, look at how humanity took off. You can see how we went through this industrial age and these are the different things that we did that polluted our entire environment, you know, and... Now look at, and from that sprung this new civilization focused on sustainability, you know, a sustainable civilization focused on the highest good of all people and all life on this planet, working together to create a world that works for everybody and achieving that goal. And I've been talking about it for years and we're getting closer and closer to begin construction. We believe that's possible through a self-replicating model like what one community is creating. And so we are open sourcing all of the components necessary to achieve that and redefine the Anthropocene Epoch. How wild is that to think that we could redefine the Anthropocene Epoch? And you're like, well, how are we going to do that? Well, for starters, we are, we are the definition of it to begin with. So we've already defined it. It's just a matter of whether or not we can redefine it. And we absolutely can. The, the definition is constantly evolving. And so one can use sourcing solutions so that they can be replicated as either individual components or as the complete teacher demonstration model designed to teach other people how to create teacher demonstration models and hubs as well. And so what this is, is an evolution of sustainability. It takes the physical foundations of sustainability, the emotional foundations of sustainability, and combines those into one model as an evolution of sustainability that fully meets the needs and better meets the needs than most traditional models. It will be objectively better than the way that most people are living right now. And to achieve that, we're taking the physical foundations of sustainability, which are food, energy and housing and we're combining with the emotional foundations of sustainability which we've identified as fulfilled living practices what we call highest good approaches to education economics and true earth stewardship becoming true earth stewards and we're putting all those things together as an evolution of sustainability and a new way to live and we're open sourcing and free sharing it so that people can take the aspects that they like and implement them in their lives so they can leave the aspects that they don't like and so that people can create it the way that they want and the whole model put together is one community designed to be a place where people from around the world can come and work in cooperation and collaboration to evolve all the blueprints, to evolve all the open source designs, and to make them even better, and to be uh, educators and mentors to those creating teacher demonstration hubs around the world as we found this global cooperative and collaborative of communities working together to teach people how to live and build and eat sustainably. So this is how we see ourselves redefining the Anthropocene Epoch. As crazy as it sounds, uh, we think it's possible and there's no better time than now. We have global communication that technology exists and so we're a 100% volunteer organization creating this. We are a non-profit organization, a non-governmental organization. We're creating this because we want to live this way and we're creating this because we want to share it so that other people who want to live this way have a pathway to doing that as well. And so if you like this kind of thing, if you like a positive dose or of, uh, of, of good news 
on a weekly basis. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our weekly progress updates. Um, like this video if you'd like to support us. Watch the end if you'd like to support our algorithm and see bullet points on the major components of our project and what it is that we're creating. Visit our website if you'd like to see all the open source content that we've created over the last decade. Visit our weekly progress update blog with the same name as this one if you'd like to see exactly what it is that every one of our all volunteer team has accomplished in the last week. And um, yeah, let's redefine, redefine, let's define the Anthropocene Epoch. I don't think it's defined yet. Let's define the Anthropocene Epoch as the epoch when humanity became stewards. When we realize that we can take a different path, we can do it differently, and we can offer that as our gift to humanity and all life on this planet, but to our children and our grandchildren and their grandchildren. Instead of leaving them a world that needs to be fixed, let's leave them a world that is as the beginning of a new and amazing chapter of humanity creating something amazing, something beautiful, something wonderful for all of us, all people in all life on this planet, creating a world that truly works for everyone. So that's what I have to say. Thanks for watching the end. And of course, until next week, we will keep on keeping on. Thank you. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet.